Hey everybody, it's your pal Trandell. Here we are with another video guide for Once Human. I absolutely love this game. <laughs> Anyways, in this guide, we are going to go over the basics of cooking for survival. Um, especially as a new player, there are quite a few really great tips and pieces of advice I can give you all to make that new player experience a lot more smoother when it comes to being able to cook the food you need. That way you can keep your energy up, you can keep your thirst meter up, and enjoy the game The you know at, at its most. Um, cooking is definitely one of my favorite features and systems in this game it's it's one of the best cooking systems i've ever seen to be honest in a game it's uh very in depth it makes sense um and the devs are are constantly fine tuning it and and making it better with with you know every single day it almost seems like so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it now Kind of like everything else in the game, cooking is going to start at the memetics tree. So we're going to open our menu to get into our memetics tree. Now, you're going to want to start working on your cooking skills very 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 early basically as soon as you have the basic parts to build a base that is when you're going to want to start working on your cooking skills so like once you have you know probably these done right here it's that way you can you can build a very basic base that's when you're going to want to start working on your cooking skills. And you're going to find that under logistics right here. Now, here's tip number one. The first tip I'm going to give you. Under this logistics tree, do not bother getting these abilities right here. Don't bother getting this one, the advanced cooking, snacks, or the farmer. Um, until you beat the tree ant boss, which is the third boss. The reason why is because, unfortunately, and I'm going to live and die on this hill until the developers change this. If you get advanced cooking, you're not going to be able to create the electric stove. The reason why is that the steel ingots that it requires, you don't get until you defeat the tree ant boss. So honestly, you're just going to be wasting energy links and ciphers learning a skill for an item that you can't even create yet until you beat the, the tree ant boss. Um, so I wouldn't even bother with these three. And the reason why I wouldn't bother with Farmer, you can technically get it after you defeat the Foul Shadow Hunter. You can create the planter box. The problem is food, the actual materials, like the, the plants, the fruits and vegetables and stuff like that, um, that we use in cooking, spoil so fast that it's almost nonsensical and it it's not worth putting in all the time and effort to build a you know really big farming um location at your base and 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 harvest all kinds of you know fruits and vegetables for them to to just spoil in in 24 hours you know it it just it doesn't work I tried it and it doesn't work. So I would definitely not bother with these three skills right here until you defeat the tree ant boss. That way, you know, you can make the steel. That way you can get the electric stove and then you can get the refrigerator. The ref Oh my God, the fridge. The fridge is a game changer, folks. Like I cannot even explain how more just how much more efficient 
it is to stockpile uh, materials and stuff like that. Because once you put them in the fridge, they don't quite stop losing durability altogether. But man, they last so much longer. So it is possible to actually stockpile food. So again, the only the only skills I would suggest to work on right now are these three for your cooking. Uh, of course, go ahead and get your water um, gathering skill um, and, and this one. But outside of those, I honestly would not even bother going further until you beat the tree ant boss. So once you have cooking 101, the meat drying, and the fishing, that's honestly all you need um, to, you know, provide for yourself and be able to cook everything you need for a large portion of the game. So once you got those three skills, then we can go ahead and get into some things you want to prioritize. Now, as a new player, the foods you want to aim for and the reason why the stove is so important, your best items, grilled mushrooms, bar none. Grilled mushrooms are going to be one of the best items you can um, create as a new player. The reason why is because they give you both energy and sanity. There are no downsides. If you look at the stuff that a lot of, you know, that you have at the very beginning, all the food items always come with a negative hit to your sanity. Things like the roasted potatoes or the roasted meat. All this stuff will hit your sanity. So definitely try to avoid those at all possible, especially since you can use grilled mushrooms instead. And the other two items, once you have your stove that you can start working um, on using more often too, is grilled fish. That gives you a huge energy boost. It doesn't give you any sanity, but it gives you a huge energy boost. And bread. Um, again, another huge um, energy boost too. Out of the three, probably fishing is going to be the one I am going to suggest. As long as you build your base near some you know, source of fresh water, any of the riverways. Um, and we talked about this, you know, before in some of my previous videos. Definitely aim for anything along these areas. Um, especially as a new player, when I first started, my base was right here. I had everything I needed. I had resources, I had wood, I had animals to hunt. I was right next to Deadsville. Uh, but for this discussion in cooking, I was right on the river. It was very easy to always have fish on hand. That way I can make some grilled fish. Um, so honestly, if you could get like anywhere within here, that would be an absolute amazing starting location. Even along here, let's see, where else could you go? The other option, too, you can go is anywhere along here, too. Anywhere along here, anywhere along the coast. Now, you're not going to have fresh water, but you will have salt water. And you will also be close to the Sutherland family orchard. Uh, we'll talk about those in just a second. Um, so, yes, the three main food items you want to concentrate on as a new player are going to be mushrooms so grab every mushroom you see folks grab every single one mushrooms grilled fish and then bread now we've already talked about how to get fish and and mushrooms you'll just find under any large tree um, just keep an eye out for them you can't really miss them they're bright red and they're going to always be at the base of trees Let's talk about some of the more rare items that you're going to start using for your cooking journey. Mainly sugar and wheat. 
Sugar is going to be super important um, to learn about because as a new player in the Dayton wetlands, there is only one location I have been able to find beets to make sugar. And I actually have it marked down right here. And we talked about this in my top 10 tips and tricks uh, video too. Use your pins, guys. Um, use your pins. That way you can keep track when you do find rare materials. You can do the same thing with mushrooms. You know, if you know for a fact that, hey, there's, you know, whenever you come across uh, some mushrooms, pin it. Mark it down. That way you can keep track of them so you always have a steady supply of mushrooms. Um, the plants and stuff in this game respawn relatively fast. Like, honestly... You can pick a, a you know a thing of mushrooms and it'll be there within like 30 seconds to a minute later. Um, so you know start making some pins, start doing a little farming rotation. You know where you know you start at your base, you you run around and you just spend like a couple minutes running around in a circuit and ending back at your base and you know picking up a bunch of food items and stuff like that. Anyways, beets. There's only one location that I know of so far um, to reliably find beets. And that's over here at the Sutherland Family Orchard. Right here next to this like you know, facility uh, right here. There's quite a few beets in this area. Um, you can easily grab you know, 6 to 10 beets. Go ahead and grab those whenever you can. And again, this is why I'm saying anything along this right here, this area would also be a really decent, you know, place to build a base. This right here actually wouldn't be bad because uh, this section right here, you would have access to fresh water. You had you would have access to salt water. You have access, you know, to the beats right here. So this would actually be a, a pretty decent location if you can get set up right here. Um, and there's all kinds of other vegetables here too, folks. So the Sutherland Farms is honestly a, a really decent place um, to set up. Now, over here, as you can see, I've got this marked down because this location is a good place to find wheat. Um, so this is where you're going to want to go to if you want to find a whole lot of wheat at once. Basically, the best suggestion I would probably recommend is build your base somewhere along here. That way you have access to the salt water because the salt water we're going to talk about next. Um, and you have access to your beets. And whenever you want to grab some wheat... You can always teleport from your base to Deadsville and then just run right over here and grab a bunch of wheat and stuff like that. Um, so that would be a suggestion you can work on. Now, the other item we're going to talk about now that also works extremely well is preserved meat. Now, preserved meat you will be able to make on the drying rack. Uh, basically, you know, as you're, you know, hunting any little, you know, critters out there in the wild, you know, deers, rabbits, raccoons and stuff like that, you can skin them for their hides and you'll also get the meat. This is why salt is so important because basically you put your salts up here, you put the raw meat up here and it will eventually, uh, produce some preserved meat. As you notice, I have three racks because it does take a long time. Um, it does take quite a long time. But the other really good starting item that you'll be able to craft with that is the preserved me here. Now, this is going to give you quite a bit of energy. It doesn't hit your sanity, but it does ding your hydration a little bit, which isn't exactly ideal, but... With a steady source of water, you can compensate for that. The biggest pro about preserved meat and the reason why you want to be able to stockpile it with you know, building a couple of uh, meat dryers is it does not go bad. 
unlike most food in this game, un, you know, unless until you get towards, you know, the late game when you can start making preserved meals in cans and stuff like that, preserved meat does not go bad. So as you're running around, you know, once you've got your base set up and you got a easy, accessible um, source of seawater, you know, you got a couple meat dryers up, um, shoot every critter you can see, <laughs> you know, that way you can get their hides, but more importantly, you can get their meat, and that way you can just start stockpiling this meat dryer with all kinds of meat and just constantly having it, you know, pump out preserved meat for you. So those are the items you're going to want to concentrate the most. Your preserved meat, your grilled fish, your mushrooms, and your bread. Honestly, with those items, you will be able to get through a large portion of uh, the beginning of the game um, just fine. You can easily um, get through the first two areas, you know, the Dayton Wetlands and the Broken Delta with just those items right there. Now, a couple other locations um, where you can find some food items that are really important. Um, in the Dayton Wetlands, uh, Sutherland Farm, and the Orange County, I, Citrus County, um, these are going to be your two main sources uh, for the wheat and beets. Now, once you get into the Broken Delta, though, as you can see right here, right around Myers Market, there's all kinds of stuff. There's farms actually on, um, you know, in the town all through this area. And there's beets, there's uh, corn, there's potatoes, there's cabbage, all kinds of stuff. Blueberries. And right outside the farm, as you can see right here, there's tons of stuff. I mean, just m mushrooms. Um, sage is another good item. Now, you don't use sage for cooking um, in the beginner areas of the map, you know, in the early part of the game. But sage is a really good healing item to have when you're just running around. And let's say you fall off a mountain or, you know, some coyote or something, some wolf attacks you. Sage does make a really good healing item to use. That way you don't have to waste your activators. Um, but yeah, and the other reason why this area is super amazing is there's tons of wildlife around here. There's deers everywhere, all through this section. So a really good farming routine could be, you know, you just, you head over to Myers Market. I usually start right around here. I will, you know, farm up about 30, you know, pieces of raw meat. And then once I have my raw meat, you know, I'll just start grabbing all the different little vegetables, but especially the beets. Um, you definitely want to concentrate on the beets early on. You know, the corn and all that other stuff is great, but unfortunately, in the beginning part of the game, you can't really use any of that just quite yet without getting those sanity um, debuffs. So yeah, mostly just concentrate on the beets, but grab this stuff too, um, because you also want to start stockpiling your seeds. Seeds are going to get very, very important once you defeat the tree ant boss, and you can start making things like your electric stove. Then you'll want to get your you know, farmer and the refrigerator. Once you get the refrigerator... Um, then you can definitely start going extremely hardcore into farming. Um, kind of like what we talked about in my farming guide too. At that point, uh, again, the refrigerator is a game changer. This thing is amazing. Um, like this fish right here. I, I think I caught this fish yesterday. Or something like that. And it's it's barely even halfway through. It's amazing how long food 
um, items last in the fridge. So yes, once you defeat the treehouse boss and you're able to make steel ingots, definitely get your electric stove, get your fridge, and then you can start going really deep into farming like I have here because now I can start stockpiling this stuff. I don't have to worry about, you know, oh, well, I'm going to grow all this corn and it's barely going to last a day before it goes bad and it's it's not going to be, you know, worthwhile. Now I can start just mass producing a bunch of food items and then storing them in the fridge and they will last a few days. That way I can have multiple days where I don't have to worry about food items. I'll have plenty of raw materials that way I can start making really good food and not have to worry about it going bad. Uh, let's see, just double checking my water real fast. Yeah, I still got plenty, okay. So yeah, um, once you get after the tree uh, boss, that's when you can start doing things like your farming and stuff like that. And that's when the electric stove is going to kick in because, folks, these recipes are amazing. I mean, this right here is one, I believe I found this one in a house somewhere. Um, this is going to give you max stamina. This is going to give you stamina recovery. But the other awesome thing about these higher level recipes is the durability. That's the other reason why these items are lasting so long. These items start with like 1400 durability. And then you put them in the fridge. Oh my god. It's absolutely mind boggling. You know. How uh, just just again, just how much having access to the fridge, having access to farming, and access to electric stove changes the cooking game, you know. Um, but yeah, definitely once you get your electric stove. You're going to have access to all kinds of, you know, awesome things. The ones I use all the time and the ones I would suggest using, first things first, the herbal tea. This is another item I found. And if I remember correctly, I think I have it marked. I believe I got that in the Broken Delta. Yeah, right here. So... Over here in Harbor Side, in this house right here, there's um, a tea recipe on the dining room table. Pick up that recipe, folks, because this thing you will absolutely use all the time once you get into Iron River. And the reason why is because it gives you an extra 20 points of pollution resistance. And that will mean everything in the iron. I mean, even in, you know, other areas too, if you do go back, that will still, you know, be a huge improvement. But in the Iron River, some of these areas, pollution starts adding up fast. So anything you can do to increase your pollution resistance is amazing. This thing is even better. Better than that, though, because not only do we get that 20 points of pollution resistance, we also recover sanity when we're out of combat. And this thing lasts like 30 minutes. It's amazing. So definitely pick up that herbal tea uh, when you're down there in the Broken Delta, 100%. Um, the other one I use all the time is, like I said, this guy right here, the Borscht Deluxe. Uh, the mushroom. The mushroom stew is a big one. So you can actually stack some of these effects, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, mushroom stew, that one. Now, you can't stack cooking effects, but you can stack other effects. So, like, if I use my herbal tea right here, 
You see how I got that buff right here? Now, watch what happens when I use this. Oh, they're both the same effect. That's right. Okay, because I remember now it goes by the icon. So, any icons that are the same will override. That's right. I remember that now. So, what you're going to want to do is have multiple food eyes like this. This is a perfect example. Totally forgot about that. So, you see how this has a different icon than these two, and even this too. You can use this, so you can use your herbal tea, and then you can use your borscht. And now see how we're getting multiple buffs, and I think even this one too, now that I think about it. No, okay, so that is um, along with that too, so, hmm. Interesting. I wonder if it's because it affects. Interesting. Hmm. I'm going to have to test that out and try to find all the different combinations. But anyways, we know for a fact you can do these two right here. And, and these two also. You just can't mix. I wonder if it's a color thing. Because these do have the same color. That's possible, actually. But anyways, anyways, tangent aside, I digress. Um, this is going to be one of the most important recipes you start using once you get into the Iron River. Having that pollution resistance and the ability to recover your sanity out of combat is absolutely bonkers um and having you know 25 more stanima and faster stanima recovery is also going to be invaluable especially if you play melee um because whenever you're you know swinging your bat or your torch whatever it is around you're going to be blowing through stanima left right and center so you want to be able to have enough stanima to finish the fight and having that stanima recovery is going to allow you to recover your stanima um, in between fights. This is also really good too when you want to go on those gathering runs. As you run between, you know, no to no, chopping down trees, mining, stuff like that, your stanima bar will slowly but surely start decreasing to the point where you're going to have to stop for a couple seconds and let it refresh. Having the Borscht Deluxe on though, gives you so much more stamina and that stamina recovery that keeps you from having to stop more often than not. With this on, you're gonna be able to keep farming longer and longer and longer in times without having to stop to catch your breath and stuff like that. So these three items are the ones I predominantly use the most um, now that I'm starting to get into the more higher level content. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the basics of, of cooking. Once you get into a routine and once you get used to, um, again, you know, picking up every mushroom you see, you know, shooting, you know, you know, a bunch of rabbits and deer and stuff like that. Um, you know, getting that stockpile of meat. Um, that way you can start drying it out on your meat racks. I mean, that's the reason why I have so much, you know, meat is just the fact that, you know, I've ran around and, you know, picked up a bunch of it. Where is my meat? I literally just had it. Thought I heard something for a moment. It must have been lightning or something. Like literally, I literally just had it. Oh, I'll find it. I got you know barrels and you know chests anywhere. But anyways, get in the habit of you know going on hunting runs, getting a bunch of you know raw meat. That way you can preserve it. That way you have that preserved meat. Picking up mushrooms all the time. That way you can always have mushrooms. 
um, going on a couple runs to the Sutherland Farm. That way you can pick up a bunch of beets for sugar. Once you get into those habits, you will definitely see that you will be able to... Hold on. I think I have company. I thought I heard something. Yep, I do. Well, they are very rude. Oh no, I am all out of ammo. That's unfortunate. Seriously, how rude. Here I am trying to make a video and you guys have to interrupt. I thought I saw... Oh, yep. Shotgun to the face solves everything. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> Just one of those things you have to worry about. Anyways, folks... That's the video. Hopefully it helps uh, you all out uh, during that new player phase of the game. That way you're not constantly having to worry about starving and dying of thirst and stuff like that. Um, and and yeah, that that's it. You know, I'm probably going to have to repair my base a little bit. But anyways, as always... Uh, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you all. There's going to be more videos coming out soon. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And until next time, this is your pal Trandell signing out.